Jumping from the original PlayStation to this? Gran Turismo 3 was a quantum leap in terms of graphics, but at the cost of car quantity. The following game rectified that issue and pushed the PlayStation 2 to its limits in the process. But with a PS3 reusing most car models from the PS2 era, what's even considered a unicorn at this point? Ahoy there! So many cars, so little time. I highlighted cars from the PS1 era of Gran Turismo last time, so now it's only fair that I do the same for the PS2 era. But this is where things get tricky. With Gran Turismo 5 and 6, Polyphony made the odd decision to port over existing models without doing much to them. This makes our definition of unicorn make less sense, because now we're looking at cars seen in 3 or 4 games. They'd still be in GT, but now that changes our definition from only in one or two games to didn't reappear in GT Sport or GT7. Anyway, it's time for another round of Unicorns Ooh. and Gran Turismo, in what I call the Standard Car Edition. What do I mean? It means that it had to have had a model designed for PS2, and was possibly ported over to the PS3 GT games. This also means I'm not talking about premium car models. We'll get to the moon someday, just hang in there. For example, the old timers from my first Unicorns video count since they remained exclusive to GT4. And the JLOC Diablo gets another nod, especially since it was a standard car in GT5 and GT6. No cut content will be discussed, so there will be absolutely no mention of Kazunori Yamauchi's Porsche 911 in GT3. Outside of me saying this right now. We'll also include the Gran Turismo concept games, even though we didn't get any of them here in the US. We did get most of its cars in GT4, and unfortunately the poster car of the concept games, the GTR concept, is disqualified because it got into Project Gotham Racing 3. So close. Without further ado, let's talk about more weird and cool cars. We start off with a car that's infamous among GT4 aficionados, mainly because they never actually drove it. This is the Toyota RSC Rally Raid car, and it doesn't exist. Sorta. The Toyota RSC very much existed, and that was a one-off crossover SUV concept inspired by rally cars. It was designed to be a road-going rally car with few bells and whistles, aggressive looks, four-wheel drive, and a V8 engine. If Toyota wanted to build a concept car that would, quote, connect emotionally with young buyers, the RSC seemed like a winner. Not enough to actually get it into production like most concepts, but it's a formula that would be a winner today in our SUV-centric country. But it would probably use an electric motor instead of a V8. But back to the RSC Rally Raid car, that's a complete work of fiction from Toyota and Polyphony Digital. But it made sense because rallying is what inspired the concept in the first place. The RSC Rally Raid car made its debut in Gran Turismo Concept 2001 Tokyo, named after the auto show where the concept first appeared. Requirements differ based on which concept game it's in, but the gist is you need to get gold in the course licenses. The RSC Rally Raid car would return in GT4 along with most GT concept cars, because like I said, we didn't get those games here in the States. I would have loved a Tokyo Detroit or a Tokyo New York. In GT4, this RSC can only be earned and not bought, like most concept cars in the main games. Winning the Capri Rally Easy Special Condition event will grant this car. It's a fairly competent rally or off-road car, but it's better known for being a farming vehicle rather than a rally vehicle. I'm of course talking about the infamous RSC farming strategy. Win the Capri Rally Easy, acquire the RSC Rally Raid car, sell it for over 260,000 credits, clear out records, and repeat when strapped for cash. It's a cheesy and nearly painless way of making a quick buck, especially if you complete the license tests and use one of the prize cars from that. Then it's also a quick way to break progression. But I say, give the RSC a chance and try it for the other rally events. GT5 and GT6 are not my strong suit, but like most PS2 era cars, the RSC Rally Raid car returns as a standard car. No modeled interior and a lower quality model. The RSC can be purchased for roughly 1 million credits from the PS3 games and be used in the few rally events the games offer. 
The RSC Rally Raid car is a made-up version of a one-off concept that was remembered as the car that was sold more than driven. But if it benefits the player for that reason, then there's no reason not to sell the RSC. But try driving it at least once and see if you like it. What in the name of Walter Chrysler's turbine engine am I looking at? This is the Toyota Pod concept, and it was exclusive to the Gran Turismo concept games. The Pod was developed in collaboration with Sony. Gee, I wonder why this car is exclusive. What made the Pod stand out was not only its kooky, dog-like look, but its emotions. Yes, it's a car with emotions. These emotions are indicated on the exterior that's surrounded with LEDs with a tone to match each mood. Cyan for neutral, red for angry, yellow for happy, and blue for sad. The emotions of the pod made their way into the concept games in the form of Pod Race. Pod Race is unlocked by completing all course licenses. You and five other pods race on a modified version of Route 5 that circles through the pit area. The gimmick of this race is a stop area before a hill where you have to stop the car, apply the handbrake for a moment while the car adjusts itself, then go when the game says you can. Trying to jump the hill will result in you failing. That's no fun. What more needs to be said about the pod? Well, it never carried over to GT4. Other than that, the car really speaks for itself. I'm glad this car never made it into production, especially if the future of AI tells us anything. Who wants catfish? Whether you love or hate this generation of the Camaro, any Camaro with a V8 is a friend. One that I grow to miss every day. The Camaro LM was created specifically for Gran Turismo based on the Catfish facelift of the 4th Gen Camaro. In the games the Camaro LM appears in, it's a race car with a 601 horsepower LT4 V8. Getting it is no easy feat though, because in GT3 it has a random chance of being a prize in the American Championship or Special Stage Route 11 all night. The only guaranteed way of getting this car is save scumming. In GT4 there is a guaranteed way to get this car, and that's by completing the Stars and Stripes event. But you might find that it's a suboptimal choice for Gran Turismo World Championship in that game. If evidenced by the CPU driving it, the Camaro LM is almost always last. I'm the king of In GT5 and GT6, it's a standard car. It can be bought from the used car dealer in GT5 for less than 2 million credits, while in GT6 it's available from the Chevy dealer for 1.45 million credits. While this Camaro of this generation didn't make much of a splash in motorsport, a 1993 Camaro Z28 served as the official pace car of that year's Indy 500. I can't tell what's more hideous, the car itself or the livery. The poor old 4th gen Camaro. It was ugly and unloved in its time. While its looks have aged like bread in a trash can, it was still a Camaro under the skin. But not even a fictional LM spec race car could reel people in to the Catfish Camaro. This next segment is an umbrella term for the F1-like cars featured in the PS2 era of GT. In GT3, these are what I consider to be the six best endgame cars because of their superior grip and speed. That is, if you're in the NTSC region like me. In PAL regions, there were only two F1-like cars that are kit-bashed together. I'm guessing Polyphony had a desire to fit F1 into their growing pool of racing disciplines, but they couldn't get the F1 license and had to make up their own. Which is weird, because Sony had the rights to F1 in Japan and PAL regions, but uh, I guess EA held the rights in North America. Like, that's the first time EA interfered in the development of Gran Turismo. I had a hard time believing these cars existed in GT3 when I first got the game. But they exist! It sounds like it'd be fun to drive a full grid of these around Côte d'Azur. But that means I'd have to finish GT3 and pray that I'm actually lucky enough to get a good roll to win an F1 car as a prize. Sorry, no thanks. Gran Turismo's not F1 cars made a return in GT4, but sporting new models based on the 2004 F1 season. And just like GT3, getting your hands on the Formula GT car is not going to be easy. 
you'll end up spending a day, or maybe eight hours in B-Spec, trying to win the Nurburgring 24 hours endurance to unlock this car. The downside to owning the Formula GT is that it can't be tuned, but the upside is that it doesn't need oil changes. Alternatively, you can also acquire a special black color variant of the Formula GT, but only if you complete the game to 100%. No free rides for you, you gotta earn that sh**. The Formula GT cars from GT4 were unsurprisingly ported over to the PS3, where they are not cheap. In Gran Turismo 5, they can be found in the used car dealers for nearly 5 million credits. Even then, good luck finding them, because they don't crop up very often. For GT6, however, the Formula GT got a bit of an upgrade. Not in terms of performance, mind you, but in its model. This was one of the few cars dubbed semi-premium by the GT community as its exterior and interior were updated. In that game, the Formula GT can be found for 2 million credits. It originally cost 5 million in version 1.00 of GT6, but I guess it changed at some point since it probably cost too much. Sony and Polyphony don't really touch F1 now, having surrendered the license to Codemasters slash EA. But it was cool to see that they tried with the cars they made up. Like F1 in real life, the Formula GT cars were at the top of the automotive food chain. Remember that Team Kunimitsu NSX with Kaneko decals on it from the first Gran Turismo? It's not often you see the logos of other game developers in different games. But when you do, as in with this drift car, it's really cool to see. This is an S15 Nissan Silvia tuned by HKS, but doesn't sport their trademark oil slick livery. Rather, it's what looks more like what I'd call Japanese hot rod. And since this is a modified drift car, that description's not too far off. Prominently displayed on the car's livery is the logos of fellow Japanese racing game developer Genki. Genki are, or were, best known for both Shotoko Battle and Kaido Battle, respectively localized as Tokyo Extreme Racer and Tokyo Extreme Racer Drift. Finally, something from Genki that's free of Genki driving jank. From the limited knowledge online about this car, it ran in D1 Grand Prix, which is a Japanese motorsport devoted to the art of drifting. Do you know Formula Drift? That's the American equivalent of D1 GP. The modified Turbo SR20 DET inline 4 cranks out 483 horsepower and was made to go sideways. But it can also lap a track in good time with proper tuning, just like the other D1 GB cars in Gran Turismo 4. The Hyper Sylvia can be bought for around 200,000 credits in all the games it appears in, which could be a decent mid-range race car. It could also be your gateway to drifting in Gran Turismo. No, I haven't tried intentionally drifting in GT. Ideally, I'd want a racing wheel to try it. The Hyper Sylvia barely counts, since it does appear in Genki's games, but I see this as either replicating real-life racing or cross-promotion with a game that was never localized over here. Despite the Genki branding, it's still an HKS car, and HKS will almost always go insane tuning cars. Talk about toys for big boys. This is what's known as the J. Leno tank car in Gran Turismo. It's an open top car with an aluminum body that houses a beastly Continental V12 engine from an M47 patent tank, hence the name tank car. I don't need to explain much about J. Leno, as he was the host of The Tonight Show from 1992 to 2013. Outside of the entertainment biz, he's a devout car enthusiast and currently hosts his own car show called J. Leno's Garage. Leno himself has a car collection of at least 169. Looks like a cartoon or something. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hilarious. The tank car was built by Randy Grubb, who sold it to Leno for about $125,000 in 2003. Though the car weighs over 9,500 pounds, it weighs only one eleventh of the patent tank that the engine came out of. This titanic, thirsty V12 lets the tank car reach a top speed of 162 miles per hour in the GT games. But Mr. Leno didn't want you to buy this car from him. Are you kidding? You have to earn it! The tank car can only be acquired in GT4 by completing driving missions 11 through 20. Funnily enough, members of Polyphony visiting Jay Leno in his garage for engine recordings saw the tank car and had to put it in GT4 on account of how bizarre it was to them. They claim it ended up in GT4 by accident because of that. In GT5 and GT6, it's another standard car. 
In GT5, the car can be bought from the used dealership for about 4 million credits, or one from the American Championship in A-Spec mode. In GT6, it can be bought for 1.9 million credits. I would not recommend driving this like a serious race car because it's too big for its own good. So big, in fact, that it can't be used in some photo travel areas in GT4. But over the years, this behemoth kept getting bigger. Some years later, the Continental V12 was fitted with fuel injection and a twin turbo from Gale Banks Engineering, with power estimates now double of what it was in GT4 at about 1600 horsepower. Not only did it add more power, but it also improved the fuel economy. I imagine it still gets less than 10 miles to the gallon because of its massive fuel intake, but having the car go faster and slurp less gas is a nice bonus for Mr. Leno. Wait, Spira? I thought you said Spira. Is it also Spira? I don't know, I never played Final Fantasy X and I have a bad history of pronunciations. <laughs> Last for the day is an exotic sports car built in South Korea. This is the Spira built by Ulium Motors, formerly known as Proto Motors in GT4. In that game, the Spira was in the prototype stage. Quite the handsome devil, if I say so. The Spira was in development since the mid-1990s and went through multiple changes in engines. One of the earlier prototypes used a V8 from a Ford Mustang SVT Cobra, and just maybe one of the ones down on claimed horsepower. This prototype from 2004 uses a V8 derived from Hyundai, though I'm not sure what kind of Hyundai this engine went into. The 2004 prototype debuted at the Beijing Auto Show and is the one that is in GT4. And you get the idea, this prototype also ended up in GT5 and GT6 as a standard car. The Spira can be bought for about 80,000 credits. It'd probably make for a nice mid-range sports car and a decent choice for events like MR Challenge with minor upgrades. Just keep in mind you can't install nitrous on it. This Spiro was never meant to be in real life because Proto Motors didn't have enough money to put it into production and the project stalled out. But Proto got a lifeline from Ulium Motors as Proto founder Han Chul Kim coincidentally met Ulium Motors founder Dong Hyuk Park. Park was a successful entrepreneur and another avid car enthusiast and had the backing to make Kim's dream car a reality. Proto merged with Ulium Motors in 2007 and finally got the car into production by 2008. Gran Turismo didn't use this updated model in GT5 or GT6, as the production model now used the Hyundai Delta and Lambda V6 engines with varying power ratings, from 175 horsepower to 600 horsepower. An electric version was also in development, aiming to be Korea's answer to the Tesla Roadster. However, in 2017, Ulium Motors closed its doors and the Spiro was no more. If Korean cars were more reliable or less prone to theft, I might have liked the Spira. Well, it's still a relatively unknown low-volume sports car, but one can dream, right? I know I probably missed several different cars, but you can only talk about so much in one video without getting exhausted. But hopefully I've put highlight on some of the more obscure standard cars in Gran Turismo. I didn't get too deep into GT5 or GT6 because I haven't played them and never owned a PS3, but at this point I owe it to myself to try RPCS3 and see how far I get without crashing the emulator. But there's only like a combined 2,000 cars between GT5 and GT6. Ah, uh, what have I gotten myself into?